Hi everybody, so in today's video I wanted to share my version of a clean makeup look. I feel like I've been wearing some version of a look like this for the past year and a half probably. I feel like it's just such a great way to do your makeup every single day because it's quick, it's fresh, it lets your own skin shine through. Um, it doesn't change like who you are or what you look like all that much. And it's also kind of nice. Like I like it better than no makeup makeup because I feel like we're not trying to look like we don't have any makeup on. We're still emphasizing the eyes a little bit, giving a little bit of lift. It kind of just gives you that subtle polish though, but we can still like pop a little eyeshadow on or do a little soft like eyeshadow wing and not feel like we need to trick people into thinking we're not wearing makeup or something, you know what I mean? Um, so I've really been loving it and I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys just how I do it. Obviously there's a lot of different ways to go about it. But um, first of all, I like to start off by using a really good moisturizer. Mine is in my shower because I that's when I moisturize after my shower. But I use the Pharmacy Honey Halo. So then I'm going to take my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I see so many people when they do this look sort of applying just this to their face or just concealer. And I will be applying some, I'm going to actually mix up my own little custom skin tint but I I prefer to do a little bit of product on the rest of my face too because I have freckles so if I just apply concealer it just looks a little strange um, I need something to sort of blend it all and mesh it all together on the rest of my face so I'm using a brush to blend that out and then whatever is left on the brush you can use to apply to other areas like your brow bone so to mix up my own little customized skin tint I like to first take my Glossier Future Dew which I believe in my last video I mentioned that I only use this in targeted areas on my face well here we are I now use it all over my face but I'll take that and then do a little droplet of my Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. Okay, this is like running down my hand. So I don't actually just straight up mix the two products together. I take my brush and I mix it into the Future Dew first. Then I go into the Catrice product and I'm actually using uh, 20 Warm Beige. What I love about this is that it's honestly really not that detectable on the skin. So I'm just using a tiny bit and also like you'll notice when I apply it, it really doesn't, you can't see that much of a difference, which I love. I don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm applying a ton of, uh, you know, thick foundation to my skin or anything like that. It's so skin-like. Um, it's one of my new favorite foundations for sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and really lightly blend that across the face. Also while I'm applying this, I do try to maintain like a downward motion. That really smooths everything down <laughs> and just gives like a much smoother appearance to the skin. So for my concealer, I try to go for a shade that isn't so much lighter than my actual skin tone because I don't want the eye to be drawn to my under eye and have it be a really obvious highlight. So I wanna get something as close as possible to my skin tone that still provides bright you know, some brightening capabilities, I guess. <laughs> and this is the Light Illusion Concealer by Flower Beauty. And I actually don't apply the concealer directly to my lid. I just don't want that much coverage on my lid. So I'll take whatever is left on my beauty blender and sweep it across. <laughs> I feel like there's still no flattering way to blend out your under eye concealer. I'm always just like making really bizarre faces. And I, I'm gonna do a little bit of my Catrice True Skin Concealer in 02 Neutral Ivory because sometimes it's beneficial to have something a little bit lighter in the very darkest part, but just like three little dots and maybe one in there. Okay, so next up is my bronzer and my new favorite one that I love so much is by Rare Beauty. This is the bronzer stick in the shade Power Boost. So I also have the cooler shade and I love that one too. So this shade is so similar to my Milk Makeup one, but I think I might actually like this formula a little bit more. So I'm gonna explain the placement a little bit. I like to go above the hollows of my cheek because I don't feel like with my face shape I need to really chisel out my cheekbones a lot and elongate my face. However, it's not really gonna do that because by the time you blend it, it will go down a little bit. Whereas if you applied it directly here, it would then end up even lower, which isn't really where we want it. So if that makes sense, that's kinda why I do that. And applying everything on the same parallel, like the same angle, will give us a lifted look. 
So I'm gonna go around my hairline with this as well. I think this one might actually be the best cream bronzer formula I have ever tried because it's just like the most quenching, watery gel formula. It looks so beautiful. So usually a product like that is gonna blend away into nothing or the opposite, I'll have a cream bronzer that's really hard to blend out and you make the little dots on your face and then you still see traces of it after you've blended little artifacts left behind and sometimes it's not even until you get into different lighting that you notice it but look at that it just blends so easy and flawlessly and it doesn't disappear into the skin or blend away into nothing which is amazing <laughs> take whatever is left across my cheeks like that and take it into the crease and if I don't have time to apply an eyeshadow there or a powder bronzer there then I have some definition there and a little bit of color. I just love the little reflection that this one leaves behind. I feel like it's so rare to have a cream bronzer that is actually this illuminating without being shimmery. Today I'm going to be using the shade Hope in the Cream Blush Formula by Rare Beauty. And I also have the shade Encourage, which is actually kind of a purpley mauve tone. I think this is the newest shade they came out with. And I really love this one too. This one is going to be perfect for like a sun-kissed look. Today I'm just going to go for something a touch lighter so these are very pigmented I would not necessarily recommend dotting it right on your face even a small pinhead amount of this is gonna be a lot of product I'll do like that much on the back of my hand that's actually probably gonna be way too much anyways and then work from my hand with a brush and go in that way it's such a pretty color I feel like these are so natural looking and glowy So you see how pigmented that is? Like, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of blending with this to tone it down, and then it'll be fine. But if I, <laughs> like I made the mistake of applying it directly to my face before, and it's fine. It's, you know, you just have to go back and forth and blend a little with it, but that takes some time. So if you wanna just save yourself a little bit of, uh, you know, back and forth time, I would definitely say just apply it to your hand. Okay, and then I'm just gonna blend a little bit more. Okay, and for this kind of look, pretty much for any look I do these days, I go in with the most, the minimal amount of powder that I can possibly get away with. Doing the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in Fair. Go in around my eye and on my lid to prevent any creasing and set that. And just sort of go in that same angle underneath my blush and my bronzer to clean it up and I feel like that just reinforces that angle so you get that same lift it's nothing crazy like a super crazy contour highlight routine or anything like that and we're not baking it's just something small that I can do to give myself a little bit of you know and then I'm just lightly touching into this Charlotte Tilbury airbrush airbrush flawless finish powder and just lightly dusting that around the outer edges of my face. Okay, so I'm just gonna hop in and do my brows really quick. I'm gonna start off with the Anastasia Brow Freeze and dip in with a clean spoolie. I feel like spoolies are never truly clean because they always attract all those little fuzzies and stuff. Not too concerned about it. I'm gonna press my brow hairs up a little bit and then in the outer corner, I don't do it as much because it really affects the shape of my eyebrow and I don't have as much to work with there, but I will just go straight across to smooth the really spiky hairs. And I'm anticipating getting a couple questions about my tree in the background. It is real. It's a ficus tree. I've had it for a couple years and I bought it off of um, Facebook Marketplace. I think I only bought it for like 100 bucks and it's about 10 feet tall which is crazy and the guy that I got it from was so sweet he had three of those that same size in his living room and he was like I just have to downsize these so oh and then I'm going in with my hourglass arch fiber brow gel <laughs> so I got it from him and um I tried not putting it outside it used to be down in my living room and I tried not putting it outside for about two years which was a really bad move I almost killed it I discovered trees like to be outside so I put it outside last summer and the heat and humidity totally brought it back to life and it's thriving 
and it's the same exact thing with my lemon tree it really is on the brink of death like every winter and I put it outside and it just comes back alive. So I can't find my little CoverGirl brow ink pen right now. I love that product to fill in any extra little sparse areas. So I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil in Blonde. When looking straight ahead and in the camera, I can see that I just need a little bit more in the center. And as far as a brow pencil goes, I do like this because you can kind of push everything up and smooth it down because it has a flatter side. Well, for my really simple eyeshadow wing, a lot of times I'll use my Natasha Denona Biba palette. And recently I've been trying out this one by ColourPop, the Gone Matte palette, and I really love this one. So the color I've been using recently is this one called Snoozin. It's a bit of a medium, maybe a bit cooler of a brown. It's like medium. And the reason I love doing this so much versus doing a liquid liner or something like that. Um, it's just so much less harsh and forgiving and if you mess it up you can honestly just wipe it off but at the same time once it's applied it's gonna pretty much last all day. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. Oh first what I usually do too which this eyeliner is unfortunately discontinued the Marc Jacob products um, but this is their like gel liner in the shade brownie. So any kind of, you know, gel liner, something really creamy and easy to blend will work. Just gonna make our lashes look longer by tight lining a little bit. I'm trying not to get too much of it in the inner corner because I don't want it transferring down since I don't use a ton of powder. Okay, so what I do here is I take my eyeliner brush. In this case, I'm using the Sigma Line Perfector E68. It's one of my favorite brushes for doing a powder wing. I take the longer, more pointed end and have it so that it's facing inwards towards my nose and then I find the outer corner, I go a little bit below that, just like slightly, and I'm mostly using the pointed edge, and I just pull out a line like that. And using the pointed side in is gonna give you a really nice tapered line. If I ever try to do it and start anywhere else on my lash line, it never turns out as good. So I do that, and then I kind of start halfway in that line I just made and start pulling back. I don't start at the very outer edge just yet. I just gradually build that up. There's a spot in my lid where if I pull the liner through that, it's gonna create like a little divot, sort of. You can kind of see it there. You can choose to place your liner under that divot. I like to go above it and I find that there's a sweet spot where I can pull the liner through and it's not gonna make the line look wiggly. If I go too far below that little like creasy area, it's gonna kind of pull the outer corners of your eyes down. And again, we're going for that same angle with everything we do. So um, once I've kind of filled that in a little bit, I'll flip my brush back around again where I started and sort of lightly just go back and forth in this inner corner. I do pull the powder slightly past my inner corner to create that like cat eyeliner, but just slightly, it's barely noticeable. And then tip the brush up to connect the two sides. And don't sweat it, like don't get too intimidated. It's just eyeshadow. You can dust it away, you can rub it off, and mush it around and blend it in, and change the eye look and erase the line. If you feel like, you know, you wanna go underneath it, just you can dip it in some powder, some cute concealer, you could even take a clean brush. Uh, this is just the other end of my brow brush. That's gonna end, extend it out, taper it off even more. It can also help you correct um, mismatched angles from side to side in your liner. And it's also gonna blend the bottom edge a little bit so it's not so harsh on the bottom. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to curl my lashes. If you curl your lashes like this, they're gonna end up falling below that angle of our eyeliner. So you wanna even tilt your eyelash curler. Going in with my absolute favorite, Pacifica Vegan Collagen Fluffy Lash Mascara. Before I apply my eyeliner, I like to make sure I have a little bit of balm on because I don't like a super precise liner. So I'm using the Smith's Rosebud Salve, salve, salve that I, I feel like I used to wear this all the time when I was in middle school and high school. You would get it in the little pots and it was the best. Okay, so I'm applying that. Using the NARS Preci Precision Lip Liner in Vents. It's not Venice, there's no I in it, but it's probably pronounced something more like Vents. Um, but this color is amazing. Oh, I really need to sharpen it. 
but I'm just gonna go in with it anyway. It's a really great color. I do like to keep my lip liner layer as thin as humanly possible. I feel like when your lip liner starts to get thick, I just it looks very makeup-y. I just got this one in. It's the Kapari Lip Glossy in Watermelon. It is clear, but it's so shiny and beautiful. And then a lot of times I'll apply this NARS Aragon Gloss, kind of like around the outer edges if I need to infuse a bit more color, but I try to keep it as sheer as possible. All right guys, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I didn't go too crazy in depth with the technique here because after all it is supposed to be a fairly simple look, but I find it interesting to piece those, you know, pieces of the puzzle together to kind of find out what all goes into creating a certain mood or a certain look with your makeup. So that's just like kind of what I like to focus on, I guess. And I hope you guys found some helpful techniques in creating like a balmier, you know, fresh look to your complexion paired with a bit of a, a lift to your face and accentuated yet soft winged liner. <laughs> All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.